Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the new Gems of War Mythic of the Arc Proxy Yavandra, as well as various teams for it, first impressions, and of course doing the key opening to go and get this thing. So, of course it is the first Friday of the month, which just happens to be the first of October, uh, which means we get the new Mythic. It's in Glory Gem Guild and VIP Chests for this week only, uh, as always, and then they'll be in the drop table with everything else. One thing we do not have confirmation on yet is if it will be in the event key drop table next week. Uh, the reason why this is relevant is it's actually Zol Carry Event Week next week, and well, that's a Zol Carry Mythic. Uh, we do not have confirmation if it will be. I'll mention it on the Monday video. We we'll probably won't know until then, unless they mention it on the Sunday thing that they kind of post going over, like the Ward Event and all that. But uh, as soon as we have info on that, I will let you guys know. Though, of course, for this video, we will not have that info, so do be wary of that. But anyways, uh, aside from that, just getting into normal means, which should be uh, hopefully fine. Uh, this thing's kind of relevant. It did get nerfed. However, it is the first Uber Doom Skull trip in the game. So it converts uh, 30 mana cost, gosh. But uh, basically, uh, it did end up getting nerfed from what it was originally going to be. It was originally going to be a 24 mana cost, um, increased to 30. A convert all yellow to Uber Doom Skull plus 3, and now it's just convert all to Uber Doom Skull, uh, or all yellow. And then um, it used to have a 50% spell reduction, and it is now a 25% reduction. Overall, obviously weaker than it was before, but still pretty viable, and still the first thing to have Uber Doom Skull spam. Of course, Uber Doom Skull specifically, since they are a mechanic that hasn't really been around much, uh, since they only happened, I believe, in between uh, during that one uh, Tower of Doom event, uh, because I think they forgot to re-add it back in for the other Tower of Doom event. But uh, basically, they convert, uh, or basically, uh, how a Uber Doom Skull works is it gives you 10 additional damage for the Skull hit, and ends up exploding in a 5x5 five five without the corners, basically is the easiest way of describing it. So uh, either like a 3x3 three three with an extra 3 on each side or a 5x5 five five without the corners uh, is basically what a Uber Doom Skull Explode does and it gives you 10 additional damage. So she gets to end up converting all those yellows to Ubers uh, which is basically going to clear out the entire board in many situations just because of how big each one of those explosions are. And then it gets the Curse Web and Poison Strongest Enemy. Very similar to Lord of Slaughter. One really relevant thing about it too is it has exact inverse colors of Lord of Slaughter. So if you use this in a Lord of Slaughter on your team, you are covering all 6 colors colors just with those two troops so they're going to have some really decent synergy uh one other nice benefit is it does have 40 percent mana star off of divines and 50 percent mana star off of elves so that comes into play pretty decently as well and it also has the final trait of conjure and doom storm which can be useful uh does it whenever an enemy dies and uh, that'll make it so you get more skulls onto the board similar to doom storm it's likely doing it at a much lower rate than what skulls uh, will commonly do uh but anyways Let's go and uh, try to get this thing, and then we'll go mess with a couple teams and uh, go from there. All of which will be in the description as well if you want to copy paste any of them. Hopefully we'll end up getting lucky here. Uh, hopefully it won't take too many, though we do have such a reserve of keys between, uh, mostly probably, <laughs> probably because of um, vault events lately. Obviously with the addition of Nomapaloozas, uh, it is easier than ever to get resources. Uh, we just had one earlier and boom, there we go. That's pretty above average luck. I think that was like, what, about 350, 400, somewhere around there, maybe not even. Um, regardless, so uh, gosh, we're starting to get a big key revert, reserve. But uh, there we go. Hey, yeah, Holy Saint Astro too. Oh, never mind. Holy Saint Astro is for human bonus. I was going to say, that has synergy. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but anyways, let's go upgrade this thing. Yavandra. If I could actually spell it correctly. Luckily, we did. Uh, let's see. We're just going to trade it manually. Just in case those orbs ever get a purpose, they've been slowly starting to add things, and we're not sh quite sure what we're getting at the end of this campaign, if they're even doing anything with it. Um, so who knows, maybe we'll need power orbs for it, or maybe we'll need some kind of orb again, maybe we'll need some kind of other weird resource that they're just going to start sinking. Who knows, maybe we'll finally have a trade stone sink. <laughs> but anyways, now with this thing upgraded, let's just go put this thing into all three of our teams, and go uh, mess around with it for the first time. Uh, of course, we'll be messing around with this a little bit more on stream, but... I always like to do at least some amount of teams for when we uh, initially end up getting it, just to see kind of uh, how it ends up working out. But anyways, uh, also, um, Zolkari can now reach 18 stars, and if I'm not mistaken, next week it actually reaches 20 stars. Because if we're getting two troops, well, well that should be 20. <laughs> I can't remember if we're getting one or two next week, but I'm pretty sure it's two. And if that is, uh, permanent plus one magic, which is somewhat relevant because this mythic would be required then for that plus one magic for 20 star. And if you don't have any mythic for that place yet, um, it's a good idea to go get one. Uh, even though the other one is pretty good, Arachnean Weaver, uh, it's still good to have one because you need it for 10 star, which is also a magic bonus for the kingdom if you don't already have it. Uh, at 10 star uh, kingdom anyways uh let's go mess with this thing let's go to pvp hopefully not have anything too oh gosh that is too annoying <laughs> rope dart team oh no um uber doom skulls are kind of interesting though similar to doom skulls in that um the fact that they have entangle might not matter uh both uber doom skulls and uh normal doom skulls bypass the whole mechanic 
of um, of uh, Entangle, at least in the sense that uh, the base damage that you have on your attack gets negated. However, the benefit that you actually end up getting from the plus 5 or the plus 10 still ends up taking effect. So it still can be pretty useful. It's going to do a blue to yellow here, which luckily does not have alignment. We're just going to take this purple, hope something weird doesn't happen from Cascade. Unfortunately, he did get a little bit of value there. Uh, actually, a lot of bit of value. And uh, then we'll just go board clear. Unfortunately, we're not cleansed on first slot, which is going to make this a little clunky. Uh, we're definitely going to have to go for a lot of mana here. Uh, we actually have a convert. One nice thing that he just did is create a billion yellows. While we are going to lose our turn here, there's going to be so much damage that I think we just go for it anyways. Alternatively, hmm... I almost want to take this and go for a buff on first. You know what? We're just going to go for it. It's the new mythic. Let's mess around with it. So there we go. There's the Uber Doom Skull. So uh, one thing that's uh, pretty relevant about her, similar to uh, Lord of Slaughter, is that, um, yeah, it, it's basically going to board clear every time it casts. But the other relevant thing, um, it's going to get most of its mana back. Uh, even though it has a 30 mana cost, this means very, very little to the sense that it's going to gain so much mana every single time it casts. Mostly because Uber Doom Skull's explosion range is so large that you're normally going to be landing it almost every single time. And uh, yeah, you can still do it with the Lord of Slaughter synergy too. Uh, of course, he ends up creating some browns here, so we'll end up having the uh, Uber Doom Skull still on the board and then exploding everything else out if it didn't already full board clear. And between one or the other, we're generally going to have an option because even if we don't have direct alignment, we could try to Lord of Slaughter and hope he lands. Uh, we still have board clear with Thrall. We still have this. Could go with a different option like here or something. I choose Thrall because Thrall. But uh, of course, you could go with a different mana accumulation option. But yeah, Lord of Slaughter plus this thing. Um, it was assumed that it would be broken, and it is indeed broken. <laughs> Lord of Slaughter is one of the top 10 mythics in the game. Uh, I'm not sure where I'd place her. Um, she's the same kind of bane as that of Lord of Slaughter. Uh, though after the nerfs, um, I don't know, we'd need to mess with her a little bit more to really know for sure exactly where uh, he would end up, or she would end up being. Also, one uh, nice thing that I didn't mention about the synergy too, um, his storm starts at the start of battle, so summon a doomstorm at the start of battle, and hers perpetuates through the battle as you get kills. So you basically have an extra skull-related storm in the entire battle, where you have Lord of Slaughter doing it for the first turn with normal doomstorm, and then you have the uber doomstorm coming in every single time you end up getting a kill. So um, that's working out pretty well. Also, we didn't really get to use it, but uh, Arch Diva can full mana one of them and give them a bunch of stats and everything. This is most if you fall behind. Thrall is normally going to be enough. You could even replace it with Hero if you want or something. But uh, I figured I'd do it with that, even though we didn't really get to utilize it in that particular battle. Mostly because it won too quick. Anyways, next up is Elf. Uh, so this mythic does count as uh, two pretty relevant things, Divine and Elf. Um, Divine you could do with like Divine Shabal Aquilin or something similar. And then have a triple scroll spam if you want. Or something else along those lines. And uh, the other one for 40% mana start. And then the other one is Elf, which is 50% mana start. And then, of course, you could do the Orb Weaver, Arachnid Weaver kind of combo. Uh, this is just a uh, weapon that some people might not have. However, it's a Zolk Carry event week next week. So uh, if you don't have this weapon currently, you can get it next week. So not too big a deal. So it's still relevant. It deals uh, damage to an enemy and then boosted by Elf allies. And then it creates a uh, mix of uh, green and purple. It's a pretty standard weapon. It just does it for Elves and uh, pretty useful in a pure Elf team. Especially since we have Resummon onto Elves. Well, uh, this thing doesn't redo it, but uh, this thing does. But uh, anyways, um, yeah, let's just go uh, mess with the team then, and uh, hopefully it should be fine. It's a pretty standard kind of uh, Orb Weaver related team, just without the life and death kind of premise. So right off the bat, we're going to take a bunch of mana as much as we possibly can to uh, get going. We're then going to cast Book, even though we have access to green right there. I want to keep it on the board just so we have an extra chance to end up getting value there. Fortunately, a little bit of a miss. Also, I should be hitting last slot, not first. I'm not sure why I went for first slot there. However... Uh, because ideally, you want to hit down to uh, Weaver range. So, uh, one slightly bad thing about this thing not creating three additional skulls is you do specifically have to have alignment. So, uh, we actually have to wait now. Uh, unlike the uh, previous team where we could just kind of spam it because we had so much board clear and everything. Uh, we are going to occasionally have to wait now for it to actually have a uh, good board in order for us to actually end up utilizing it. Which is slightly unfortunate. Uh, definitely a bit of a downside to her compared to that of Lord of Slaughter, whereas like Lord of Slaughter, even though there's no brown to uh, skull alignment right now, we'd still probably cast him in this situation if this was him and not her, because the chance that one of his six uh, extra gem spawn would end up landing is decently high. However, uh, she cannot end up doing that. If she doesn't directly have alignment, she won't be able to do it. Also, as you can see there, we do have Uber Doom Storms com uh, skulls coming in. Uh, they seem to be coming in at a pretty high rate. I feel like they might nerf it. Uh, I wonder if they accidentally put it at the same rate of skulls. I'm not sure if any... I, I think they did. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> Does anyone remember when uh, Uber Doomstorm first came out? How ridiculously broken that was? Well, I think they forgot to adjust the Uber Doomstorm rate. 
because wow is that a lot of Uber Doom skulls we either got really lucky or it is that broken okay yeah it is that broken I think they forgot to adjust the value but yeah anyone remember the uh, when uh, Uber Doom Storm or sorry normal Doom Storm first came into the game well it's back <laughs> and even stronger than ever because I don't think they balanced it to be the right rate. It looks like it's doing the rate that skulls do, or you know how normal gems spawn. And this is very bad because Doom Skulls and obviously Uber Doom Skulls are stronger than a standard gem. And for them to come in at the same rate as a standard gem is very broken. Uh, that will likely be fixed, so um, don't count on that as being the mechanic. Uh, even with that being fixed, it'll probably still be really strong. However, she's artificially stronger than normal uh, due to this thing probably creating more Uber Doom Skulls than what it should be. Anyways, for the final team, uh, we're going to be using a uh, cheap team. Uh, uses all low rarity stuff. Epic of Blow, not counting the Mythic itself. I uh, want them even being a faction epic, so even easier to get. Uh, we're kind of basing this on Tulio. Tulio is an interesting mana accumulator that I don't feel like gets used a lot. Uh, it's not as good as like Thrall and uh, many of the other options within the game. However, it does have a nice gimmick in that it can actually feed mana to things that are blocked, which is probably the main thing that can end up doing pretty well. Uh, it's also pretty good at feeding mana to either yellow or green. So if you're building like a pure yellow, pure green team ends up working out. Uh, also, one other thing that's pretty relevant if you are in early game and you're looking for a good tank, uh, if you go throw some Chaos Shards at Frostfire Keep, um, the cheapest and easiest to obtain, um, you probably need like less than 100 Chaos Shards unless you get really unlucky. You might need like 200, 300, but uh, likely just a few attempts. Uh, you'll end up getting this troop. It is the cheapest score reduction uh, troop in the entire game at a 65% score reduction at only a faction rare. And faction troops are even easier to target out. So uh, super ridiculously easy troop to get. Even has a lifesteal. So um, not only does it have um, the pretty much high score reduction in the game, you know, it does go up to like 80% or so. But realistically, as far as like a normal troop, 65% is the highest any troop can currently have. That isn't specifically a uh, mythic or such. Although they did add a 70%, but that's only on one mythic and it currently hasn't been added to anything else. But anyways, 65%. As far as non-mythics and lone legends are concerned, this is the highest reduction on any epic or below troop. And it's only a rare, so it's super easy to get. Um, so yeah, you can just end up doing this, have a nice tank. Obviously, the reason why you need a slight tank is Uber Doom Skulls if you happen to uh, miss a little bit. Uh, they're going to be backfiring, so obviously uh, need a little bit of tankiness there. So uh, right here, we're just going to take a skull for now. Uh, trying to get things rolling. Unfortunately, we don't really have a mana generator uh, starting up initially. Kind of need that little bit of uh, mana going into uh, Harpy Mage and Tulio before we can really get things going. However, once we have that, we're actually going to just completely ignore that skull. Go for a nice big yellow here, and this should get us rolling. And from here, uh, we can hopefully just end up winning. We are taking quite a bit of damage here. Luckily, that 65% reduction coming in to make sure we don't necessarily die quite yet. Uh, otherwise, we'd probably already have lost this battle, but... 65% reduction coming in to save us for at least another turn, if nothing else. Uh, somehow, not full mana. They're really unfortunate. Might actually die here with the cheap team. But of course, we are using low rarity stuff against the proper team, <laughs> which is probably why we're dying here. So we'll go give it another shot. We need to find a slightly weaker team to use the weak team on, though, just so we can get things rolling. Uh, biggest issue will be getting the mana going a little bit initially. Oh, we'll fight a life and death team. It could, if it could fight life and death, it could fight anything. <laughs> slightly weaker of a life and death team, though, though he does have Entangle. Um, though Entangle might not be that relevant because Uber Doom Skulls can kind of bypass it for the most part. So we're not frozen on green right now, so we'll end up taking that green over so we can then take this green over. So we can get, in, get even more mana. Uh, of course we have Tulio, so we just end up doing this on yellow, which is generally what we're going to be aiming on, on a pure yellow team. Um, we can end up going for a little bit of lifesteal here just to make sure this thing doesn't die again. And kind of keep him alive. And I think we can just go for Harpy Mage here, get the last little bit of mana, and that should pretty much be a match. Uh, all we need now is some yellow alignment, which unfortunately we do not have. Uh, which, of course, once again, is going to be a slight issue with her. Uh, without having multiple things that can kind of manipulate the board, there will be situations where if she happens to not have any way to poke, um, it's going to be kind of bad. If she can even get one poke, though, she can normally chain most of the board. Like right here, it might even be worth doing just because we have a single skull. And this might not seem like much. But this Uber Doom Skull will hit that Uber Doom Skull, which will hit that Uber Doom Skull, which will hit that Uber Doom Skull, which will hit that Uber Doom Skull. So we're clearing almost the entire board, even though we're just getting this three match. So it is still worth casting right here, just because of how ridiculously large that uh, Blast Radius is uh, going to be. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get too much for a mana back, but we can still end up cycling it. Go for a Harpy Mage here. Uh, do we have any way to explode green? Uh, green, 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 Tulio. Hit green. No, hit yellow, no! <laughs> Oh no. Also, there's not a single yellow on this board for us to end up doing. That's actually one slight issue with this too. If we don't get a single yellow back, we actually can't end up doing Tulio <laughs> onto yellow. <laughs> Didn't think about that initially. But yeah, that could be slightly problematic with this team, couldn't it? 
course, other alternatives is to use like a Thrall or something similar. Uh, though I generally don't show Thrall for cheaper teams, even though it's a common. Uh, you don't have as much magic early on in the game, so it's a little bit harder to use Thrall. Where something like Twilio still has pretty much all of its value earlier on in the game. So, anyways, um, a little bit of a weird match. We're still going to be able to win, though. Should be able to. I sure hope so. Uh, unfortunately, no Uber Doom Skulls. We're gonna need more board clear. Let's actually do it on something that will actually clear the board a little bit. Nope, it still only kills the one. Don't have any kind of thing we could do here, though. I can move that into position to go clear out most of the board. Oh, he also has a convert for. I was wondering why it seems like we had so ridiculously little of it. He also has a way to get rid of it. So he's just gonna kind of entangle spam us here, which is gonna be very annoying. Uh, we can still hit through with Uber Doom Skulls, but obviously not as much as we would be able to uh, otherwise. This is a very weird stall battle, that is for sure. Uh, we'll end up taking a... Uh, we'll try for Blue Off the Sky here, I guess. Uh, that or just feed Man into it directly. I'm just going to do this onto... I will still do it on Yellow, actually. I was going to aim for a different color, but it seemed like Yellow is the way to go there. Still keep poking it. The only problem is he is getting reduction on our already reduced uh, damage. Which is making that kind of annoying. Uh, we don't even have the alignment there. We'll just go for a blue here, just kind of cycle through. He might end up getting that life and death kill on us. Probably going to get like a double kill or something on us soon. Over in that area. Uh, only if we had Lord of Slaughter. Actually, I kind of want to try to uh, Lord of Slaughter team again. That was pretty insane. Um, all right, we'll just go for this again. I need more board clear. And hopefully we can get something rolling. The problem is he's just going to keep converting out our uh, yellows there. However, we do finally have alignment, the first one of the entire battle. Unfortunately, still no kill, so we haven't been able to get the Uber Doomstorm from uh, Sky to start taking effect since uh, we haven't had the chance. Uh, however, we're about to right now. Uh, not an extra turn, but so much damage that, uh, you know what, I'm actually not going to yet. We have enough to kill, so I'm actually going to go for that first. Unfortunately, once again, it converts away our uh, yellow. We would find like that one team that just happens to have a way to get rid of yellow. <laughs> that would happen. But anyways, let's go try the other team again. Cheap team doesn't want to work against proper teams, apparently. So we'll go with uh, the team that, um, the main team that I personally think will end up being the best for it. Um, there might be a different thing other than Arch Diva that ends up ultimately getting used for this team. But as far as initial teams that I thought would end up working, this is definitely highest on my priority list of things that seemed completely broken beyond belief. Uh, unfortunately, we do have a little bit of an issue and that Thrall has to get up, but uh, it isn't an Empower build or something like that. So we are completely dependent on Thrall getting mana uh, for us to actually get the team rolling. However, once he does, we're kind of good to go. I'm actually going to give him extra turn Skull here. I uh, actually don't care if we're taking some damage on it because it's more important that we get uh, mana rolling than him necessarily dying. Because even if he goes out, he um, should still be fine. Um, but ideally, we do want to keep him alive, obviously. So, uh, let's see. What do we want to do here? We don't have alignment. Can, is there any weird way we can obtain alignment by moving these reds in a way that will do so? I feel like the answer is yes. However, I'm not seeing one. Actually, I do. It's right there. There we go. That's matched. It's over. It is so over. <laughs> it is so over. Okay. Uh, no kill yet, though. Uh, however, we just regained alignment. Thank you, Yellowstorm on the opposing team. See, the enemy team's helping us for once instead of the other way around. Uh, do we have alignment again? No. Will it still board clear pretty much everything? Yes. Do we go for it? Probably. Uh, of course, we could go for Lord of Slaughter instead. However, uh, we'll mess with the new Mythic cast here. Uh, also, we still have not needed to cast this. However, we're about to. So, um, if we had guaranteed Lord of Slaughter alignment, what we'd want to do is cast Lord of Slaughter here and then the other thing. I'm going to risk it, though. So, I'm going to do this and then full mana feed off of this. And then it's going to poke us once. However, that's not going to matter because we're going to gain so much durability that... Um, his poke basically means nothing. So we're going to take that over, do another convert, and yeah, this team is perfectly balanced. <laughs> but yeah, he's mostly just like a backup plan. I'm not sure if Arch Diva is going to be meta for, but obviously, the synergy here is primarily the Lord of Slaughter into Arc Proxy Yavandra. And yeah, it's pretty solid. Um, for that combo alone, if you have Lord of Slaughter, definitely worth getting this thing. Honestly, I would get, try getting this thing regardless of what point you are in the game. Uh, if you don't have the Uber Doom Skull mechanic, you can end up getting it that way. If you don't have a Mythic for uh, Zolkari yet, you just got 10 stars Zolkari, or at least um, easier to get 10 stars Zolkari, since it requires having the Mythic for it, and that's normally one of the harder things for it. Um, but, uh, and otherwise, you have it for Lord of Slaughter synergy. So, um, yeah, really, really, really strong. Highly advised, regardless of what point in the game you are, you at least try it for it in the Glory Gym Guild of VIP chess. And if nothing else, it's a fun new mechanic, since uh, we haven't really had access to Uber Doom Skulls, even though it's kind of been in the game for 
couple months now, uh, this is the first thing that has really had access to utilizing such a mechanic. But anyways, guys, that'll wrap it up for this video. Uh, we'll be doing a stream today at noon Eastern Standard Time, kind of just messing around with raids and the Mythic a little bit more. And of course, we'll be streaming every single night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll mess around with this Mythic quite a bit, see what we can do in PvP. Uh, obviously, messing mostly with uh, Lord of Slaughter with it, though we might try a couple other things, see what works, see what doesn't. Uh, like that one <laughs> low rarity thing uh, might not end up working out as much. Though it is low rarity, so they're generally going to, you know, lose more often against higher rarity stuff. But still, if you guys still have any other questions, feel free to leave in the comment section below. All the teams shown in this video are in the description as well if you want to copy-paste any of them. And I will catch you guys later. Best of luck trying to get the Mythic, and have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye, everyone, and thanks for watching as always.